Sydney. I'm still only in Sydney. Every time I think I'm going to wake up back in the jungle. When I was in Nam, all I wanted was to go home. When I'm home, all I want is to be back in the jungle. Just me and my Seiko. Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Well, I had to do something, didn't I? Apocalypse Now, undoubtedly one of the best war movies ever made and arguably one of the best movies ever made, full stop. The film features two characters wearing two different watches prominently throughout that have gone on to become synonymous with those characters and the movie and perhaps even more iconic than they would have been because of their inclusion in the film. Those being Marlon Brando's unhinged Colonel Kurtz who wore suitably odd a bezel-less Rolex GMT Master II and Martin Sheen's hero of the piece Captain Willard who wore of course the Seiko 6105, a watch that featured on the wrist of many American GIs during the war itself. Now Seiko never want to miss a marketing opportunity and to extract more cash from their loyal fan base, released the SLA 033, a limited edition, only two and a half thousand were made, very expensive, 4,000 US dollars, re-release of the Seiko 6105 a couple of years ago. And a couple of weeks ago, never wants to miss an opportunity to etc etc etc, they have re-released another two different versions of the Seiko Turtle, but they have shrunk them a little bit. So rather than the 44 mil diameter of the original, they're down to just under 43. The SPB 153, which is the one I'm gonna unbox for you today, and the SPB 151 featuring a black dial on a full metal bracelet. Now, I haven't just bought one of these, though I'm sorely tempted to, perhaps this will push me over the line. This one was sent to me by a subscriber in Melbourne called Sean. A big shout out to you, Sean. Thank you very much for your your generosity. He got in touch a couple of weeks ago and he said he had one of these just arrived but he was still in a honeymoon phase with something else. I didn't ask what that other watch was. Would I be interested in reviewing it on the channel? And I said yes please. You can follow him on Instagram at the book watcher. I will leave a link to his Insta in the description of the video. All right let's flip the camera and have a look at the Willard. All right, let's get into the box then. Like I said, Sean is over in Melbourne. I've been doing rather well this year so far with people from Melbourne loaning me watches. That is where Ashley is from. He's been buying a ton of stuff this year. They have been under tighter lockdown than we have in Sydney. So I think they've all been buying new watches to alleviate the boredom and to keep them sane. Doesn't sound like a bad strategy. Stay calm, stay indoors, buy a watch, repeat. And I wonder where Sean bought this one from. Let's have a look, see if there's some clues inside the package. Now, 6R35, that is a clue as to what movement this SPB153, well, there we are, there's a clue. Seiko Boutique in giant shiny letters. You buy a watch from the Seiko Boutique, there's one in Sydney, I believe there must be one in Melbourne as well. You get a full five year warranty, so much, much better than if you were buying it from Japan, for example, or if you were buying it from an online retailer, you get between one and three years. So you pay full whack, but you do get a discount. So how much is full whack then? Well, I said the SLA 033 was four grand. These are around a thousand US dollars. Gone are the days, folks, of bargain Seikos. If you've got a Saab 033 or an 035 somewhere in your collection, hang on to them because that, I think, represents the last of the real great value Seikos. I'm personally really tempted by the new SPB165J. Similarly, those are a thousand US, about 1500 Aussie. I've been eyeing one up in the Seiko Boutique as well because it would have the five year warranty. Let's see what this new, new Turtle Willard reissue looks like then. Oh, there we go. Well, no great surprises about what it looks like. It looks lovely. And there we go, still got the tags and the stickers. So Seiko Prospects, part of the Prospects range, this one. SPB 153J1, so made in Japan. And once again, confirming that 6R35. First time I've encountered one of these, so I will put it on the time grapher for you a little later. It is an updated version of the 6R15. Essentially the same movement, but with a 70 hour power reserve, I believe, which is a, a welcome addition. I guess they should be adding value if they are gonna be increasing the prices still unsigned crown there. 
Thanks, Seiko. You spend a thousand dollars and they don't even bother putting an S on the crown. Perhaps they're keeping it period. Perhaps that's the excuse. Definitely noticeably smaller than the standard 8105. Now, I say that because I have owned and reviewed a number of 8105 clones, 8105 homages from Bomb Frog and Mercure and the like. Didn't manage to get my hands on an SLA 033 and I certainly haven't had a look at an original 6105. You can still buy them on eBay but they're a couple of grand each these days and you don't get the reliability. You don't get a 70 hour power reserve and a brand new hacking and hand winding cycle movement. That is for sure. All right, let's get some dimensions and specifications in this one then. So I measure it at just under 42 and a half, just about 14 mil thick with a very compact, just under 47 mil lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width on this one. And on the supply rubber strap, very, very soft and comfortable on initial impressions. That one, this one weighs in at 112 grams. So definitely a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. Stainless steel case, crown, bezel and case back. Now, hang on, I'm sure Sean won't mind if I peel the stickers off. If he wants to relive the moment, he's always got this video to refer back to. Always very satisfying. There we are, the, the old wave on the back, part of the Prospects line, it's got the X there also. So screw down crown and I believe 200 meters of water resistance, there it is stated. And this is a divers certified, so a divers automatic ISO rated at 200 meters. Sapphire crystal, so we have got a slightly domed, slightly beveled, so kind of semi-domed, semi-box sapphire crystal. And that is an aluminium bezel insert with loom pit there. I will actually do a loom video with this one. Now, how's the bezel action? That is quite nice. No back play, no bounce there. It slots in nicely, but Sean did suggest to me that it doesn't really line up, which would be another piece of classic Seiko. How's that looking? No, it is just slightly off. At least there is no marked chapter ring. There's no reho here to misalign. They've just managed to misalign the bezel. For a grand, you don't get a signed crown and you don't get an aligned bezel with Seiko. But we'll all queue up to buy them anyway, I have no doubt. You do, however, get a dial in a lovely shade of green with just a little bit of sunburst. You wouldn't really want this one to have too much sunburst, I don't think. It would be a bit gaudy and it would detract from that kind of vintage military tool watch thing that this watch is so clearly designed to to have about it that type of vibe you do get some nice applied indexes and you get a beveled handset so again a little step up there from some of the more basic seiko the basic turtle and samurai models kind of classic handset very much like the ones on the original 8105 and that paddle traffic light second hand there another bit of signature and the only splash of color that isn't green anyway. Lumi Bright, plenty of it. I'll put in a loom video here. I'm only gonna get one shot of this one, so I may as well add a loom video and some outdoor shots for you as well, which I don't normally do with an unboxing. Seagull's Lumi Bright, well renowned to be excellent quality for the money, and this one is no different. It really does look pretty good indeed. Now, date complication there on the dial at the three o'clock and a nice little beveled frame around it. All clean, all kind of classic Seiko, including that misalignment. Okay, okay, so you may not get a signed crown or an aligned bezel for a grand, but you do get a watch that wears magnificently and looks fantastic on wrist too. Very, very comfortable strap here and nice hardware. Very nice, solid, but not too big, I don't think, with the Seiko etched in both and a proper metal retainer with the Seiko etched in there as well. As I said, I've had a couple of the slightly larger. This doesn't really feel all that much smaller. Maybe it looks a bit smaller, but the big ones wore so beautifully you're probably not going to notice that this one is marginally smaller on wrist than the, the full size 44 mil originals or reissues or clones or whatever way you've managed to get one of these Willards on your wrist before, but super, super comfortable. You see how the case slopes in towards the wrist as well, so it never feels like a big and heavy watch on your wrist. It doesn't really look like one either. Overhead shot, I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference, by the way. Classic Seiko looks, classic lines, and plenty of legibility because that is obviously one of the key defining features of a dive watch. Let's see how it looks back outside in the jungle.
Well, perhaps not the tropical rainforest of Vietnam, but it looks pretty good there in my garden. That green dial, you can tell the sunburst effect more so in natural light than you can under my studio lights. Nice tonal matching there with the bezel insert as well. Personally, I'd probably opt for the black one if I do go for one of these because it does have the bracelet. This one has drilled lugs though, as you see there, so you can swap it out. I guess you can put anything you like on it, uh, perhaps a paratrooper style Marine National one or a NATO strap if that's your thing. But when this rubber strap is so good, I'd be tempted to leave it on this. Oh, Seiko, not the finest set of numbers I've seen off a watch. Certainly not a brand new watch like this one anyway. Minus 15, 16 seconds per day. Beat error is probably a little higher than I would have hoped for at this stage of the game anyway. It may have a 70 hour power reserve, but by the time you get to the end of the reserve, this bad boy will have lost about 45 seconds, perhaps even more than that. That is running a little outside tolerances as well. They claim kind of minus 15 to plus 20 seconds per day variance for this one. If I was Sean, I might be tempted to take it back to the boutique and get them to give it a tweak. So has this admittedly brief encounter with Sean's 153 encouraged me to buy a 151 of my own? Has it pushed me over the line that I talked about in the intro? Well, uh, perhaps not. Perhaps it's pushed me the other direction. For a thousand USD, 1500 Aussie, I reckon they're going to have to do a bit better than this. Seiko seem to be squeezing the prices without offering you much in the way of specs from their cheaper end stuff. Now we all kind of roll our eyes and say, oh, Seiko, it's supposed to be misaligned at $250. That doesn't look quite so sweet. It's not quite as endearing at $1,000, I don't think. And I would have expected a little bit better out of the 6R5. I appreciate one watch, one movement in one position, but nonetheless, that wasn't a particularly auspicious result, which is a shame because it is a stunning looking watch. You know, I, I am into the movie reference. I'm into the case shape. I'm into the whole 70s, late 60s vibe that this watch gives off. And I would love to own one. But for the price they're asking, it would probably have to be a little better than it is to get me to part with my hard earned cash. Sorry, Sean, I don't mean to rough up your watch. You were very good. You said, hey, say what you like, do what you like, stick it on the time grapher. He pointed out the misalignment to me. He said he's going to love this watch regardless. So good on you, mate. I hope you do enjoy it back in Melbourne. And I hope you take it back to the Seiko Boutique and at least get them to tune that 6R35 a little better than it currently is. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in a future video.